Hi, my name is Laura Batante. This is my two bits, and today I have this really sweet little jellyfish, which would be perfect for a under the sea themed party or as a room decor. Um, this size is an eight by eight, um, but it could also uh, you could take the template, which is free and in the notes for this video, um, and enlarge it. You could easily do this much bigger, and then you could like hang three of them together which would look really awesome so uh, that's what we're going to make and uh, I'm going to go over the materials all right so we um, have the template you're going to need some cardstock uh, this one has a bit of a shimmer to it pick whatever color you like and then find yourself some matching ribbon um, I'm going to suggest three different sizes but uh, that's not set in stone um, I have some fishing line you could use if you don't have fishing line you could use um, white thread would work um, I have a very small hole punch but if you don't have that you can go ahead and use a thumbtack I have a little bead to put on the end just a bit of a stopper and my scissors some uh, paper clips to hold our template in place and then I have my embroidery floss needle uh, just to help poke everything through. There you go, that's all we need. All right, now you can, um, of course, do something like this with a cutter and it would make it super easy, but um, it's not that difficult to cut this by hand. And um, honestly, when they're hanging up, no one's gonna notice uh, whether or not you cut your lines just perfectly or not. So don't worry about that. So we're gonna cut all the way around and uh, I'll finish that up and then we will meet back. All right, so I finished cutting out my shape and then I took my hole punch and uh, punched all the way around, just in a little bit. And then I put a uh, hole in the center with my thumbtack. And you can use the thumbtack for all the holes. These holes don't need to be large by any um, means. They're just um, I'm going as small as I could hole punch wise just to make it easy um, So we're gonna put that aside and we're gonna take our ribbon now. I've cut uh, three lengths of this uh, sheer ribbon and I've cut them uh, they're about an arm's length or like three feet Something like that and we're just going to fold the top um, I don't know why I took that off Hard to demonstrate while I'm holding that so just somewhere in the middle just a little fold like so and um, then we're going to stack all three of those together and I will put the paper clip back on to kind of keep everything in place while I'm working on the other stuff if you have a like a clothes pin or um, a big like a sewing one that probably work a little bit better than this all right so we got that uh, I have two, three lengths of the narrowest um, ribbon approximately the same length and then I have two of this one um, do what you like you know whatever you think looks best is the way to go for that and then I have some fishing line and I've just tied a bead onto the end to help keep it in place and then in terms of the length for the fishing line I guess that's however long you want it to be for where you're planning to hang it um, it would be super um, cute to use a bunch of the little ones uh, maybe in a banner otherwise I, if it was me I would be making it at like three different sizes this is a eight inch but I would um, use the photocopy or pop it up to a 10 inch and a 12 inch and then I would hang them uh, like that uh, in a corner just to um, give a little bigger impact and so after I do that I'm going to pop on these two whoopsie let's take that out pop these on there we go it's so nice once you get them on the line because they're contained and then there's this which is a little bit trickier and um, when I stuck that on I didn't stick it on the way I want it I want it so that all of the um, ends are sort of hanging down and you'll notice that I'm kind of encouraging it to um, make like a little flower just so that they're all poking out in different directions and again I'll just aim for the center 
hopefully we get them all in. And I think we did, so that's good. All right, so now we're gonna um, pop it on. So we're gonna go in through the bottom. And if you're using a fairly large length of fishing line, this part can get a little awkward. But here's how I did it. I went, um, I've just picked one, it doesn't matter which one. And then I skipped one, went in through the next. Then I skipped and went in. Now, because I'm trying to video this, this is going to look terribly awkward, but we'll see how it goes. Then I'm going to start again. I don't know uh, if this is the best way to do it. Uh, it's just how I did it, and it worked. So why mess with success? All right, see, I told you it was gonna look terribly awkward, but. There's really no other way to do it uh, other than just to kind of mess around until you get all of the pieces tight. And then you just push down a bit and there you go. All right, so once you get it nice and snug, um, I just took my needle and went back through the second one down to give myself a little something to tie to. And then I'm just gonna pop it through there. And when I go to make this uh, knot, I am actually going to take my needle through more than once. Um, that just helps it not slip. So I know this is super hard to see on the video. And if you happen to have uh, a knot that you've used before that you know works then go ahead and do that so there we go that is done there's not that much to it and really the the only part that's awkward is right there at the end when you're trying to close it up so all done I hope you enjoyed this craft if you did then I would really appreciate it if you would give this video a like and if you'd like to see more stuff that I'm doing here on my two bits then please subscribe to my channel thanks very much for joining me today